Today on Power Addicts, we are doing boom shackles or boomerang shackles. Hmm, why do they call them boomerang shackles? I do not know. Do you think? Hmm, yes. Okay, enough of that. There's a right way to put them on, there's a wrong way to put them on. But we are going to show you the correct way and why do they have to go on that direction. Also, some come with center braces, some do not. These do not, so therefore we are going to make center braces for these as well. Look at that. These things are beast. Motor built stuff. Rocks. Check it out. Alright. Let's get to work. Now here on the driver's side, I've got a set bounded up. Got my bolts here. Try a little. Here on the driver's side, I've got these right here mounted up. Bolts are torqued at 25, 30 foot pounds. I didn't actually torque them with a torque wrench, but by hand, they're about 25, 30 foot pounds. Just to get them good and tight and in position so I can measure my spacing between this surface and this surface to make me a brace or tubing cut in between here. So, lay the tape measure up in there, looking at about three and a sixteenth inch. So I'm gonna cut me a piece of tubing to go in between this right here. The only thing I've got here is square tubing. So yeah, I'm gonna chop this some square, put this inside here. At least for now, I'll leave it in. If I find me some round tubing later, I might put it back in, or I may just lock the square tubing and call it a day. So, okay, cut my tubing real quick. Now, before I cut the tubing, I made sure my chop saw here was exactly square with the back fence right here. Laid my square up here, brought the blade down, made sure it was in line with the square, along with the square being flush here. I was good to go. So now I can mark out my tubing here, my 3 and 16th, and chop it off. Now, after you cut your first piece of tubing, you go in and you check the fit. I was like, oh, that's sweet. Beautiful fit. So now we want to make sure we mimic this same cut. So what do you do? Metal cutting tip. You take your piece that fits just perfectly. Come down here. You get here and you push it. Like you get your blade down here. I can't need two hands here. Another hand anyway. You push this piece of metal against the surface of the blade here. And once you do that, you got this piece flush. Then you take another piece of metal, or if your clamp will get in there deep enough, it'll work. But if you take another piece of metal, bump up against that, that makes you a stop. So whenever you take your next piece, slide in, bump it against that, chop, then your pieces. If you got a couple multiple pieces, that's the way you can do it. Or if you just need to make sure that your second piece is the same length as your first piece, you're good to go. So just make you a little stop for your metal to keep it consistent. And then your second piece is cut, and now you touch it because it's hot. Then you take your first piece that you cut, that's already cooled down, easy to touch, pull the bolt out, put it in place, slide the bolt through. Then we're going to figure out how to position, how we're going to want this positioned. In order for me to figure out how I want this right here positioned, what I got to do at this point is take my bolts out so I can swivel the boom shackles all the way up here and all the way back to figure out where my limitations are. So at this point, take out the bolts, loosen this one up so it flexes well. Okay, first we'll go through the explanation on my custom setup here, and then we'll look at situations on a stock YJ using my 91 in the front of rust bucket here. In this case right here, I've got short leg here, long leg here, arrow pointing toward the front of the Jeep. So when I go into full stuff, meaning when the leaf spring here down, the leaf spring, which is right here, is attached here. Let me zoom back a little bit. Come down, see if there's your leaf spring. When this eye, which is connected to here, when it goes into full stuff, meaning when you got your tires stepped all the way into your fenders, it's gonna push this outward. Well, being out here, of course, I've got nothing going on out here, so I'm gonna get full extension of the leaf eye coming out like this, not a problem. But what this is going to serve me as a benefit, not only for full stuff, but full compression, full drop, was whenever your springs, your axle, or something like that goes into full downward articulation. That's going to stretch this out like this, because your spring eye here is pulling this way, which is going to pull your leaf, your uh, shackle, this way. Now, in a case to where you, your um, shackle goes into full extension and it's coming out straight here now all of a sudden your spring comes upward really quick in some cases on a stock uh setup on stock straight shackles boom it'll stuff your shackle up into here then the next thing you know you got a leaf spring that's just totally bent from this point it gets this main leaf right here it takes its eye and it folds it forward like this totally mutilates them that's where the boom shackles come in handy to prevent that 
I got my center brace here so whenever it comes up so far it hits on these and stops it prevents it from going too far now I still think I'm gonna put me some gussets from about right here to about right along there something like that to limit a little bit more travel to make sure I prevent from bending my springs so I still think I'm gonna go from here to about there 45 degrees or so to give us one some more bracing for this but for two a little bit uh, travel a little bit more on my shackles now let's look at another situation okay let's look at this scenario this is how you, oftentimes you see them mounted and people think it's correct they put the long leg or short leg whichever it ends up turning it's wrong either way if the long legs up here or the short legs up here it doesn't matter but if the arrows pointing back this way it's it's not right in a case like this so what we get is full stuff this means whenever your spring is compressed whenever you got your axle stuffed up it's pushing outward like this okay you got a lot of limit you got a lot of travel not a problem it's whenever you get your drop here and it's pulling the eye in this way and for whatever reason if your axle snaps up quick enough and doesn't articulate back like this instead it goes up like that what do you got you've got this spring eye right here the main leaf this rolls it like that bends the heck out of your leaf that leaf is junk so boom it goes up like that bends your leaf the leaf becomes junk and well yeah it's a bad thing so the way i showed you guys the first way is the correct way to put these on so let's see And, nope, almost went the wrong way with it. So again, axle comes upward, pushes out like straight here. I got plenty of travel, not a problem. Axle drops down, it pulls this in. It can only go so far because of the limitation, because of the limitation here. So it prevents my my leaf spring from getting totally warped. Cool. Like I said, I think I'm still going to do a gusset like the one in here to limit just a little bit more travel on that. But cool. All right, let's look at it in stock in a stock situation on my 91 in the front of this. Okay, this this is the front of rust bucket. Look at all that white salt scale stuff. Yuck. I've got so much work to do this over it, but anyway, on with the show. Here's our booms. They go on like this. Why do they go on like that? Well, of course, here's your frame piece. Here's your spring eye for the leaf spring. They'll be sitting by like this right here. So whenever they pivot upward, because this spring is getting pulled back this way from the axle dropping down this way, it'll come up. And that bolt will bottom out on this right here. This bolt right here will bottom out on that to prevent that spring from wrapping up too far and bending. Now again, you see where some people will mount them like this, but what happens? The spring drops, the spring stretch this way because your front axle drops. The next thing you know, bam, you got a bent leaf spring because it goes all the way up and hits your frame. You got good compression here because it extends out good. But whenever you drop your axle down and it has to and if it happens to snap back in and it comes up like that, yeah, then you've got a bent leaf. It rolls this leaf upward like this. So you want this like this, kicking out long leg down, short leg up. It comes up, this bolt hits here to limit travel to, to prevent bending your leaves. Now if you want to go long long leg up, again, look how far it has to travel upward before it hits anything. Let's put the bolt back in. Again, you put this here, and it travels upward. It's going to go all the way up and hit the frame, or like right along here where the steering uh, box brace is, before it stops. That's a lot of travel before that leaf's going to get up there and get bent. You don't want that. So again, short leg here. Oh, I just pinched the crap on my finger. That goes here. It comes up, boom, hits right there on the back back to limit the travel to prevent bending your leaves. This is the correct mounting positioning for the front of your YJs. There you go. Now we're looking at the back of my 91 YJ. This is the proper orientation for mounting boom shackles. Why? Because 
when you go into full compression it'll force the stuff in your tires up in your fenders it's pushing you back like this which is allowing your spring eye to clip to get back here and you know back to your cross member and whenever you full drop dropping your axle downward it will do like this it'll come up like this this bolt will limit here and hit the frame to prevent bending your leaves so the shackles will go this way stop there with the center bolt located properly or your brace will come back and hit the frame there to prevent bending your leaf now let's look how some people end up mounting them long legs back like this here's what you get it'll come so far and boom you just limit your uh, you just limited your uh, upward travel because now this bolt's hitting the frame worse yet okay that's just limitation of articulation or flexing that's just limiting that that's all it's doing still not good for, for wheeling but the downside to it really is the fact that the shackle can now come all the way up here boom it's frame here the next thing you know you've got a bent leaf bad now let's look at short leg high honestly it just can't work like this because then your spring out your spring out here is gonna be stuff in here this has no movement at all. I mean, it has very little movement because your bolt is here, your brace, whatever the case may be. It moves backward a little bit, it hits the frame here. It moves forward a little bit, it hits the frame here. So your spring eye is always positioned forward like that. There, this is just not gonna work at all. So again, long leg, short leg down, pointing back. You can limit your travel here, but boom, you bend your leaf there. Long leg high, arrow pointing toward the front of the Jeep. You get good travel backwards for articulation. Coming forward, you've got your safety here. Boom, hits the frame, prevents you from bending your leaf. So, long leg high, arrow pointing forward. That is a proper mounting for boom shackles in the back of a YJ. If you liked that video, hit me with a thumbs up down below. Subscribe if you haven't. Cool comments, love them. All right, throughout the video, I kept saying, hey, this is the proper orientation for a YJ. CJs are the same way. CJs and YJs. CJs have a narrower leaf mounting. CJs have a narrower leaf, meaning the YJs have a two and a half inch leaf, but the CJs have a two inch leaf, if I remember right, either two inch or two and a quarter, something like that. They got a little bit narrower leaf regardless. But the shackle situation, same situation. What the way they mount and everything, same mechanics. So the way I showed you to mount on a YJ, mount your CJs the same way. And I'll have to point out, I don't know if you guys noticed, like, the massive thickness of those things. Yeah, these are motor-built. These things are awesome. I will be a motor-built fan from now on out. I ordered these parts, put them on rust bucket. These things are beast, man. That's 3 8 inch thick right there. I think the stock ones are only, like, eighth inch thick, but they got that stamping that makes them crooked. I'll show you on this one right here real quick. Here's the stock shackle on the back end of a YJ. And this is motor-built. Look at the difference, massive. So yeah, motor build stuff rocks. So like I said, if you enjoyed that video, thumbs up, subscribe if you have, and cool comments down below. Peace out, later y'all.